back in my hometown, Wi-Fi is prestigious. It's mostly installed in institutions that have young men and women sit in reception halls, pretending to await a certain managing director that deals with personal issues upon being asked, how may we help you, sir or madam? So they sit with their China-made smartphones now loading video clips of popular celebrities such as Beyonce, Kendrick Lamar, and the young man wishing to play football in Europe Sunday will sit and watch clips of Mesut Ozil or Lionel Messi. Now as a young poet also wishing to perform in this white man's land, I had to sit down in these reception halls, buying time to use free Wi-Fi and watch cl clips of former slammers. Though I must really confess that I didn't understand most of this foreign language, especially when the poet spoke so fast. Mm. I have understood the themes quite well. Especially these themes on racism and these weight issues poems and weight. These weight issues poems always had me put up a doubt face like, is weight such a real big issue in this white man's land? Because mm. trust me, if I was to talk about weight in my hometown, I doubt anybody would listen. How do you even talk about weight in a country where starvation is still a crisis? Oh, yeah. Kids, yeah. kids so. die in dry lands like animals. The machiated bodies hit our TV stations every time in the news. And it's not a thing of the past, no. It's a daily thing that is not even considered a national disaster. And the only thing that gets the government working is when a daring journalist dares to talk about it in the media. So this time it will have a caption like, In the other news today, a boy seven years of age was found dead in Wajir this morning. The cause of death is yet to be established, though sources tell our journalist Dennis Sonsariga that he may not have eaten for days. And then this is followed by a picture of a little boy's corpse. His size? That of a three-year-old. And even the media wants its viewers about the pictures they are about to show. So I bet it protects the rich from losing their appetite after seeing a creature they happen to share a race with. By default, of course. Now tell me, will I really sit down in these reception halls, buying time to use free Wi-Fi and listen to pieces about people who don't really watch their weight, and then blame the society for what, overfeeding them? And one man, instead of sitting in his couch all day, blaming the society for calling him whatever names chose to take a trip to Africa. And he, unlike me, did not have it rough at the embassy trying to get a visa. His skin spoke for him. So he came in as a tourist. And in the jungle, he lost his way. Instead of driving south, he drove north. Came across a, pe a people in a desert. He had his camera in his right hand and a snack in his left. So a young girl on the ground dying. Her eyes popping out of their sockets. Looking like a breathing corpse. I bet screaming the words, feed me, please. So this foreigner dashes out, stands, stands aside to examine that she's still human, and then walks towards her, and takes out the camera, focuses, takes an epic pic, and this little girl stretches the hand and gets, I guess, screaming the words, feed me, please. But then the foreigner takes out the camera again, focuses, and takes an epic pic, and then hands her the snack and she holds it for about a second or two before strength fails her and she passes on. And this foreigner cannot stand it. So he dashes back to the car, drives back to Nairobi and flies back to his country. And we, people of Africa, heard that he became an award-winning photographer for capturing life and death in Africa in two epic pics. And we, people of Africa, wish that they make him a convex strawberry casket with five layers of fat on it for capturing life and death in Africa in two epic pics. Thank you. Yeah.